the whole upper structure and the face and the mind is being developed. What mother things is transferred, the, the, the Holy Prophet says. So, perform evolution, purify yourself when you're breastfeeding your child. The Holy Prophet says it is recommended that you purify yourself when you're breastfeeding because you are transferring your thoughts to your child. Think that you're in the presence of God when you're breastfeeding because you will be rewarded for it. The reward is very high. Now the second stage is at the age of three comes the hardy or the guide. That's when the child starts differentiating between good and bad. Or oh, you know, when my children usually, you know, if I told them that do not hit your sister, they would say, you are, you, are, you are bad. Or you know, the terms we use in our own languages sometimes we try and keep. Um, they would, you know, because we only use very basic language with the children. Good and bad. This is good and this is bad. You are bad. You, you did something bad. So they would say, Dad, you are bad. You know, they would say it back to you. Because now they've started differentiating and the language has come in. They can differentiate between good and bad. At an age when a child is about five, six, the tradition say you have to cover yourself. When you, when you should not be uncovering yourself in front of a child that can now differentiate between good and evil. A girl after the age of six and seven and, and boys also, you should now make them regular in prayer because they are very innocent at that age so innocent that they adapt anything that you give them. And the example given is that when you tell them to tell a lie, you know, tell your child, someone is knocking on the door, tell them, I'm not at home. When you start teaching them to tell lies, they don't do it professionally. What do they do? They say, my dad is saying he's not at home. <laughs> because they can't do it. They're innocent. God has given them perfection. You know, there are three types of perfections in human beings. There is the, the plant perfection, which only grows, yes, and gives fruits. And there is the animal perfection, which moves with free will and produces offspring. And then there is the human perfection, which is knowledge, which is spirituality. And that's what we're made for. And that's where I wanted to end. We are made for the perfection of humanity. We have been given the intellect. We are made to gain knowledge and 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 and, and spiritually excel. There are other stages which I do not wish to go into. I think I can uh, bore you for a very long time about the developments of the, the spirituality and the human life in the traditions. I wish that it was developed further uh, by the scientists and the, the Muslim scientists and the Muslim psychologists. Just one aspect. There is one tradition by the first Imam, Ali bin Talib, where he says there are first three phases for human life. First seven years, your child is your master. Meaning, do not make them work. Treat them as masters. The second seven years is your slave. Meaning, the teaching part comes in. Be strict with them for those seven years. First seven years, do not be strict at all. Treat them like masters. Be very, very careful for these first seven years. Treat them like masters. Next seven years, treat them like slaves. Be strict with them. Doesn't, that doesn't mean hit them, beat them. It only means that be strict with them for the next seven years. From the age of seven to the age of fourteen. You can imagine, they're going through puberty, they're becoming adults, they are young adults, adolescents, you know. The next seven years, they are your deputies or assistants. Or vazir, you know, the, the vazir. Even the, you know, the, uh, the English dictionary uses it but doesn't actually define it properly. They are your deputies and assistants. Take advice from them. Treat them like adults, young adults, from the age of 14 to 21. And then he says, then take them whatever they've become. After 21, they may have become your masters, they may have become your friends, they may have become your slaves. You know, many, many, many times they, they treat you like a slaves, you know. They don't realize, usually after teenage, uh, you know, once they've become teenagers, they would say, Dad, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, this is what comes in. You are from an old age, the times have changed. That's not how life is today. Well, when do they realize? When they have children of their own. My dad was right. But it's too late to, to realize that. In their 40s and 50s they realize. So these are the three stages. There are some other traditions that say up to the age of 30, your uh, learning skills are at their peak. And after 30 they stop. And after 40 your skills are not uh, for learning, but they are for teaching skills. From 30 to 40, they, they don't excel, but up to 30, your skills keep increasing. 
There are traditions by the Holy Prophet to say that after 40, your sins are not forgiven easily because you are at the maturity, you are the peak, at the peak of maturity. And at that time, your, your, your prayers are not accepted easily because um, you are very mature. And the angels say, even now you still need to be taught. Even now you need a reminder after 40. And you should try and get a stick in your hand and keep reminding yourself that you will be going. So do not sin, you know, reminder. Uh, it's not an obligation, it's only a reminder. Um, and then there are other things after 70, 80 and 90. After 70, if a person dies and the, the angels do not, you know, the, the, the tr treatment is, is very simple and easy because they've become old in the service of God. After the age of 80, uh, God says, do not even shout at them, do not even, you know. And after the age of 90, they're forgiven and taken to the paradise because of their elderly age. God says their bones and, and their flesh became weak in my service. So, at all the different stages, there are traditions how a person should be, what they should be doing. Um, um, I have prepared other things, but the last point that I want to mention, the balance in life, and that's where I end. The balance in life, human life, is, is achieved in four things. And this is a summary of um, the work of the two scholars, Naraqis, Ahmed Naraqi and Mahdi Naraqi, father and son who have worked on, on the ethics of um, philosophy, yes, uh, the philosophy, you know, the philosophy of ethics, basically. And they have books uh, which are probably hundreds of pages. The father wrote a 900 page book, Mehraja Sahada, the, the Ascension of Morality, and the son has Jamil Sahada, three volumes, again, probably over a thousand pages. And this is the summary outline in, in four sentences. The balance in life can be achieved in, in becoming wise, wisdom, courageousness, chastity, and justice. Four things. Wisdom, courageousness, chastity, and justice. How do they define it and how do they say that you have to work? It's a, it's a long story, but briefly two things. He says wisdom is a result of refinement of intellectual faculty. There are four faculties, Intell you know, the intellectual faculty, the faculty of anger, the faculty of desire, and the faculty of imagination. Because I'm trying to, to rush it and finish it off, I'll give you it again. Wisdom is a result of the refinement of the, uh, the intellectual faculty. The two extremes of the intellectual faculty are craftiness and stupidity. Many people, they, they try and overuse their wisdom and they become crafty, they misuse others. And many do not use their wisdom to the proper extent and they become stupid. These are the two extremes. But the, the refinement would result in, if you refine this uh, faculty, the intellectual faculty, it would result in wisdom. The second faculty is a faculty of anger. The two extremes are audaciousness and cowardice. A person who goes and looks for trouble, you know, the bullies, you would call them, you know, the, the bullies in this society or any society, they are overusing the faculty of anger. They do not have control on the faculty of anger. And some are coward, they have, they will not even stand up for any oppression that is going on. Again, both are condemned in Islam. The middle path is courageousness. When it is needed, stand up for your own rights and for the rights of the society. The third is a faculty of desire. Once you refine this, this faculty, the faculty of desires, you have chastity. But the two extremes of this faculty are gluttony and immobility. Some people who just think about the desires and sexuality, sexuality and eating, all they think about is food and the opposite gender, that's all. So they become, you know, the, the gluttony is the one result. And the other is immobility. They ignore it completely. And I don't know, all sorts of illnesses can come out of it. They have gone deep into it. Uh, but chastity, if you refine it, you will only have higher or chastity. Yes. And the last thing is.